Hi, this is Paint with Girls Gone Right, and we are talking about sex today. We've talked about this a few times, and you know what? It's got to be said. Someone's got to talk about these things, and apparently I have a history of posting about sex articles on the internet, so why not? Why not it be me to talk about it, right guys? So you guys already know the segment. If you're subscribed to this channel, which if you are not, make sure that you click that subscribe button below so that you get notified anytime that there is a new video and there is a Patreon linked in the description below if you wanna go above and beyond. So if you are new to this channel, I was a liberal in college no longer a liberal, my frontal lobe is fully developed. I am 26, so that actually is the age in which your brain is actually fully developed. So I will blame that, and I will blame the indoctrination that is going on within college education. And I will also blame myself for not having strong enough values to sustain that. But, you know, if you have not seen the segments before, I have, I was a, a writer in college, so I wrote for The Odyssey and I wrote a bunch of liberal, feminist, awful articles. They were not great. And this one, I will say, we've already done the really bad one. So if you haven't seen them yet, go look on my channel. There is some really bad articles of me saying that I don't ever want children because I wanna be a girl boss or free the nipple. Um, there was just some really interesting articles and things that I thought 10 years ago in college. So thank gosh for reflection and growth and changing and, you know, just coming to, coming, uh, I get to fruition with all of your morals and values. I think really it, the, the main thing that changed me was going back to church, finding my values and morals again. And after that, I've just never looked back. I think when you're in a system, you're, when you're in college, it's just group think. And when you have professors that are extremely woke and they're selling you sociology and they're telling you that uh, capitalism is bad and that sexual liberation is good, all of these things, it's really hard. You, I mean, you just have to have really strong morals and values to stand against that and come out on the other side the same way in which you entered that, that system. So. This one is called Save Sex for Love, Everything Else is Meaningless. Meaningless sex will only bring you regret. So this is interesting, guys, because it's not my normal feminist article. This was a little different. Like, you saw me posting about free the nipple, and then I'm over here telling you that in the same swing that sex actually should not be meaningless. The casual hookup culture is just ruining people's ability to emotionally connect with people. It's ruining their pair bonding. It's ruining their attachment styles. I think that when you participate in it so much, you are creating your own trauma and that is something that you can prevent. And it's going to be really hard long-term when you find the person that you wanna spend the rest of your life with and that you realize you have a very high body count your ability to connect with someone, potentially your husband, is going to be a lot more difficult in the pair bonding sense after you've had sex with 50 people. And there are people out there that are going to tell you that sex is not an emotional thing for them, that it doesn't matter, it's just physical, and they don't have attachment from having sex with someone. Honey, relax, I have those in my mouth all the time. That is the biggest red flag that I've ever heard. If you are someone or know someone saying that they don't emotionally connect with someone over sex and it's just to them, it's just an act and they don't have feelings after that. That's actually very sad. That's frightening. That's not a powerful thing. So what the left is going to tell you is that that's sexual liberation, but really you are psychologically messed up when you don't have the ability to connect with someone after sex, and here's the thing, it's not a choice like, oh, I can turn that off in my brain because if you have the ability to turn it off in your brain, there's something wrong. That is foreign, it should be foreign. That's not how humans were designed. I really do think that sex is a way of connecting with someone on a deep emotional level. And when you do that too soon in a relationship, I think you build attraction based off of that. And then you kind of, if there's any red flags, you are blinded to them or you might settle. Like if there's things that you don't like in the relationship, well, you might be really sexually attracted to them. So you're gonna keep pushing through, although it might not be right, but you had sex really early on. To, or it might set a standard of respect that you had sex early on in the relationship. And because women 
Here's the hot take. Women, you give it up, men may not respect you after that. And that is the hard truth. And I know girls are like, well, that's not fair because why men can do that all the time. It doesn't matter. Ladies, you hold the cards and you know that at the end of the day, if you go home with a guy at a bar, it is up to you if you are going to have sex with them or not. It is not up to the guy. The, you, it is in control. I mean, obviously if the guy doesn't want it, sure. But let's say that they do. Ladies, you have the, it, this, the are in your hands. How you want things to happen afterwards? Do you want them to respect you? You shouldn't have sex with them. I think it sets the level of how they are going to treat you and do you respect yourself? And that is a hot take because you know the all, all the liberals on the internet, all the people that think that sex is liberation and the sex revolution is good and we should have sex with whoever and whatever and it doesn't matter. It really does because this is psychology. This is science. And you can't really change that. When you're changing it, you are going to have trauma. This is going to do things to your brain that you're not going to comprehend in the moment. We're gonna dive into the article and see what I agree with now, because this was Peyton, March 14th, 2018. Guys, that's that's crazy. We're coming up on the anniversary of Peyton, uh, another year of Peyton not being a lib. So, thank gosh. Um, okay, so let's just read through this article. The first paragraph, we have all heard the save it for marriage speech. You grow up and when you're an adult, you find someone special and marry them. Then you can finally deflower yourself, give it, give it up, sexual relation, etc. But until then, we must be oblivious to the experience of sexual pleasure. Well, this is not that speech. My belief may differ from everyone else, but I'm just being practical. This is not the 1900s and you don't get shunned from the village if you're not a virgin. Okay, let's keep going. I don't agree with this save it for marriage, but I also don't quite disagree. We are creatures with curious instincts, we have natural hormones, and we are promiscuous. It is simply in our nature to succumb to this act. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you have to save it for marriage, but I am going to tell you that you have to save it for love. Okay, pause. I agree with that. And I understand this is the controversy here within the conservative movement and I am going to tell my kids, I hope they save it for marriage, to save them the heartbreak, to save them the stress. I hope that you can make yourself pure until that happens. But I, I do think saving it for love is very powerful too. I think what people regret is the hookup culture going on outside of hooking up with strangers, not knowing their name, not knowing if you're ever gonna see them again, all these things that is like instant flee of regret. When you're a teenager, hormone flooded, it might be a little hard to resist your urges. It is possible though, when you give up one thing, something you can never get back, it changes your mindset on sex. We give in, then it becomes an itch we have to scratch. It becomes a turn and or it turns into something that we just have to do to fill a want. Something that is supposed to be to hold meaning is all of a sudden an act given up in the face of temptation, traded for guilty pleasure. Like a sticky note, it can only stick so many times before it loses the adhesiveness. You have sex multiple times and then it loses its meaning. Oh my gosh, guys, the only reason why I'm smiling like this is because to this day, I say that if you guys listen closely in many podcasts, I have dropped the same thing, the sticky note trend of when you stick a sticky note on the wall the first time, it is adhesive, it's not coming down, you can turn on the ceiling fan and it's staying right there. But then when you keep changing the place, you know, you, you stick it on the wall and then it's the 50th time you go to stick it back and it just falls right off the wall. The same thing happens with sex. This was written back in 2018, and this is still relevant to today, guys. Although you guys were to be last time saying that it wasn't that long ago, but you know what? I'm only 26, so I feel like when I have these, uh, when a long time has passed, it may be for me because this was like me living in a whole nother life. I was a liberal, so for me, it feels like a long time ago because I'm a completely different human now. So maybe that's where it comes from. So cut me some slack. Okay, when you find someone you love, sex is no longer just physical. It is not meant for pleasure. You are giving your most vulnerable part of yourself to someone. When you love someone, it brings you closer. It builds trust. You don't feel empty and guilty afterward because it's right. You do it for passion, not for pleasure. Like many things, people use it for the wrong reasons. When you do it for the wrong reasons, you forget what the right reasons are. Millennials do different things 
do everything differently. So if you can wait till marriage, that is awesome. Most people don't anymore and they don't even wait for someone they love. If you don't put any meaning towards it, it loses its value just like anything else. No strings attached in sex buddies is fool's gold. It's meaningless and it's just going to make you feel empty. Sex is not just for satisfaction, of course. A good part of it is, but if you don't have the love, you are screwing to screw yourself over. I can promise you, once you find the person that you love, you will regret having sex with anyone before. Wow, based Peyton. She was a liberal? But that's impressive for a liberal to write. The shocking truth of what was going on in Peyton's brain. She was in the midst of getting indoctrinated, but was still trying to hold on to her values. And I honestly... I'm not disgusted after this article. Usually I'm my mind's blown and I can't believe I said these things. But I will say, if you don't have the love you are screwing to screw yourself over, that's that's writer Peyton coming out in college. That was uh, that was very clever. <laughs> you should not go out and hook up because I do think that you really are screwing to screw yourself over. If you are having sex with someone that you don't like, that you don't have a relationship with why are you giving them that like that really is the most vulnerable thing that you can give someone and i think you get hurt a lot more when you have sex before you have a solid relationship and you're not in love i think it hurts you ultimately in the end it will hurt you more because if it doesn't work out i think it does hurt more i think it's easier to walk away in a relationship where you have not established a strong physical connection like having sex and when you find something that doesn't work out and you're not compatible a month into the relationship because you find out that, um, I don't know, it's just like the biggest red flag ever that he says that he's never going to church and he's Christian, but he doesn't ever want to come to church with you on Sundays and he's never going to see himself doing that. Well, you haven't established it in that way yet. So it might be easier to just say, you know what? We're not compatible. We tried, walk away. I think it's easier to leave a person when you don't have that pair bond. And I've talked about this before in the chemical post Malone episode where that is a real thing. When you have sex with someone, you are pair bonded to them. Imagine your brain tied to all the people that you had sex with. Maybe it's just one, maybe it's, maybe it's two people in who knows? Maybe it's more, but imagine your brain tied to all of those people. And it's just like that invisible string attached to everyone that you had sex with. Hopefully, hopefully it's not a large amount, but in some way you gave something of yourself to them. And when that relationship ends, I think you hurt more. You don't understand because you had that connection with them and it just, it's it, the connection stopped. And I think that there's a lot of things that you have to go through psychologically. And when you try to reattach yourself to someone, this is where the attachment styles come into. I know that they talk about uh, uh, that that book focuses on your childhood years and the, ha the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I think that book is absolutely fascinating, first of all, because I think it explains a lot of what's going on in hookup culture today. But I also think that you have your attachment style developed when you were a child, you know, how you were raised, how your, how much time your parents spent raising you physically, emotionally, where you're all your needs being met. But especially as an adult, I think when you, when you put yourself in the hookup culture environment, you are rewiring your brain. It, it is a slippery slope. Like you have sex with someone for the first time and you feel all of those things. And then you start to get into hookup culture where your brain is setting off all these things and firing off the, the love chemicals. And then you have to tell it to stop. You're like, well, I don't like that person. So you, you try to block all of these things out. And you're like, I'm gonna ghost that person. I'm never gonna talk to them again. I'm gonna hook up with someone else next weekend. Who knows? And you are forcing your brain to do something that is not natural for it. So you are rewiring the things that it's supposed to have. And you think it's okay until you meet someone that you love and you have sex with them, and you don't feel all of those things that you're supposed to feel. You're, it's just another body to you, and you don't have that strong emotional connection. Sure, maybe you have that pleasure, you have that instant gratification, but you are supposed to feel something when you have sex. And I think it's very foolish to take that away from yourself because you're not winning anything by hooking up with all of these people. There's no trophy for the biggest slut. 
<laughs> Haven't seen that one yet. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is no reward for all of that. What, you had a hookup? You had an orgasm by hooking up with a random stranger? That does not make you a winner. I think what the most powerful thing is, is when you are in love with someone, you have a very strong relationship and the icing on the cake is you have sex, you have strong sex because you have bonded with that person and the attachment style is not, it's not a gray area. There's nothing broken in that connection. And then you have a very successful and healthy relationship because of that. So I think that is, that deserves a trophy right there. Not vice versa. That is liberation from the matrix, if you will. I think the matrix is the people that are going out all the time, drinking till odd hours of the night, hooking up with random people, being obsessed with work and money and shopping and the things that they have and the instant gratification and the likes on social media and the followers and the only fans. That is the matrix. Getting out of the matrix is realizing that anything of this earth does not hold significant value in your life. That is the only way out of the matrix, matrix. And I think the sexual liberation falls into the matrix and the liberation from the matrix is understanding that there is something far greater and more desirable than things that are superficial. So with this article and all of this being said, save it for love. I think that is the best thing that you can do when you really love someone and not just lust because lust is everywhere. Lust is porn. Lust is OnlyFans. Lust is the flirting on Instagram. Lust does not last long. Lust is a flame that all it takes is a gust of wind for it to blow out. You want a very strong connection that that candle is not going out. Even if there's a hurricane, that candle is staying lit. That's love. Love is going to get you through the hard times. Lust is a good time, but love gets you through the hard times. And I think that first is knowing the difference between those two. So don't participate in hookup culture and don't screw to screw yourself over as Peyton circa 2018 would say. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, maybe not so awkward sex talk. I think this might be one of the only sex articles that I wrote besides free the nipple. That was, that was a little sexual. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys didn't suffer too bad. And if you liked listening to this, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and thank you guys for watching Girls Gone Right.